Good afternoon. Uh, in a change of uh, mood, uh, in a change of mood, uh, today presentation will be uh, for the air distribution around cooling towers, and uh, the theme is to try to save energy. So this paper uh, is co-authored by one of my students and one of my colleagues. So in this, we'll be uh, uh, describing the uh, introduction, the objectives. Uh, you know that we have to use uh, cooling towers uh, to uh, disseminate, to uh, reject energy for our uh, refrigeration and air conditioning uh, systems. And uh, cooling towers are very important in our uh, projects as uh, that they are the way to cool down and reject heat. So there are few types of cooling towers that are very well known. Uh, they depend on the mechanical or natural draft. Natu uh, mechanical draft will have a uh, forced and also a uh, induced draft. So in, in a cooling tower, typically you'd like to cool down the water that is being used for cooling the condenser. And this is done by using the current of air. What is important that the air which we live in uh, contains uh, moisture. And if the air is completely saturated, it will not be able to pick up more moisture, and hence the cooling process will not be effective. So for the performance of uh, uh, cooling towers, some very important parameters exist, like the wet bulb temperature, recirculation, and also the interface. And these are the factors that are included in our uh, in the uh, study. So the objective of the study is to uh, do a simplified model of a cooling tower and uh, to understand the behavior of the air circulated around the cooling tower. There are some literature uh, already in existence distributing the air distribution around the, uh, the cooling tower. <coughs> so these are in the open literature. Uh, in here I'm doing something that I've been doing for the past 40 years, which is I do what we call a, a numerical simulation or mathematical modeling, CFD, computational fluid dynamics. It's a very strong tool to simulate what happens in reality. And uh, when I started this business in 1973, uh, we could manage to use only 8,000 grid nodes for your calculation solution on a mainframe. Now we are doing this set of calculation with 18 million or 20 million grid nodes on a PC. So that tells you the difference between my slide rule in 1973 and the present computational facilities. You imagine, I used to run this computation with only 8,000 grid nodes at the mainframe in London University. Now my students will do a much bigger calculation scheme on a PC. What a great advance. So now we have the equation which we all know for the momentum, continuity momentum energy, species transportation, and also of course we have the terminus model because our flow is turbulent. So these are the equations. I know you have seen them before. Students do not like them. But actually these equations bring me money as fees. I'm a designer, a consultant. So a lot of my clients, they ask for a numerical, for a simulation. And they pay money, which is good. I know that many of you will be very happy to hear that. So we have the equation and we solve it what we call computational uh, fluid dynamics. So we select, for example, here you have your uh, cooling towers. And of course, because the cooling towers uh, will be sizable, then we have to take our uh, domain of calculation, much bigger than that, to take into account all the surrounding effects, the boundary conditions. So in this case, we have a large cooling tower, 
its capacity is 17,000 kilowatts or 17 megawatts. And we have two cells and two rows. And uh, these are the specifics. So here we are comparing the results that we obtain uh, at different grid sizes. Now we have, as I, I told you, we have here 18.6 million grid nodes, which is very large. Of course, we take into account the wind profile. That's the prevailing wind profile in the city, uh, which is also important. So we do some validation. We have to compare our prediction to some experiments, measurements reported in the open literature. So these here are some of the comparisons. You can see the, 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 the experiments are the circles and the predictions are the other symbols. So in this case here, I'm going to look for the wind velocity, wind direction, air discharge velocity, and some of the design, architectural design of the cooling tower. Because in the cooling tower, when we have a cooling tower, our friends, any, any architects here? All mechanical? All right. Okay. So the architects, they don't like our cooling towers. They want to hide it. They want to frame it. They want to put it in an enclosed space. I'm trying to tell them this is wrong. There must be access for the air to go inside. And uh, 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 there should be some openings. And so we concentrate here on the parpet, the louvers, and the height. And uh, also the cylinder height on the top of the cooling tower, because they don't, li they, they don't like to see it while it is functional. Then it must be there. And sometimes we have to use it to make it silent. So these are the cases that we studied. Now we do the when the uh, velocity. And you can see here, I'm just trying to see if I have the movie running. No. So you have here the velocity, uh, speed around the cooling tower. These are the two cells here. And you can see that the, these are the temperature. Then you have the uh, temperature from the other side. At the various wind velocities, 10 meter per second, 7 meter per second, and so on. You have the humidity. Red humidity is very important because of the moisture content in the air. Wind direction also is very important because we don't want any cross uh, uh, interaction in this area. So these are some of the temperature profiles. Also the exhaust velocity. And here you have the interaction between the two cells. As you can see, this area. This is where we have circulation, which is not good, because we'd like to have the air that has been saturated with water vapor to go away, not to be recirculated in, in the in the middle. So here we have the humidity uh, at very various exhaust velocities. Effect of louvers also is very important because here we have the cooling tower is uh, uh, encased or put inside a, 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 a housing. And this housing is to uh, hide from the outside. So at least we have the velocity, temperature, relativity, and so on. And uh, some of the indicators that we look for also is the wet bound temperature increase uh, due to the different design parameters uh, for the various cases, and also the, ex uh, the exhaust uh, recirculation rate. So case two would be ideal. I'm trying to make the presentation as short as possible so we can make up for the time. So the main finding is that uh, it's recommended to install the cooling towers uh, in the wind direction to be parallel to the cooling towers, and also to uh, the exhaust speed to, to be, uh, uh, it, it will cause a marginal improvement, and that the fan speed should be carefully determined, uh, the head of the fan, so uh, it doesn't make uh, uh, a lot of uh, noise. 
because also uh, if we have uh, noisy cooling towers, low noise and super low noise, especially if you are putting the cooling towers in a residential area, which happens, or on the top of a hotel, then uh, the uh, environmental regulations of, uh, require that the noise level should not be more than certain uh, decibel at certain uh, distance from the cooling tower. So we have to take care of that as mechanical engineers. And with that, I thank you for your patience. And uh, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions for Professor Khalid? I'm sorry, the movies were not working here, but uh, this is why I was a little bit nervous as well. I've got the same problem. <laughs> okay. yeah, thank, you. thank you very much.